over what the unknowns were. So we, we in class, we went through some, our control groups, right? And we defined what happens when you have a pH indicator, right? And we used phenolphthalein, right? There's, there's several pH indicators, so phenolphthalein is one of them. And we said, what happens when you mix it with sodium hydroxide? What happens when you mix it with acetic acid? I'm just going to put ACE. What happens when you mix it with water, distilled water, right? You know these results. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So what happens when you put, mix it with distilled water? Nothing happens. It stayed, it stayed clear, right? Yeah. The phenolphthalein way was stayed clear. When you mixed it with sodium hydroxide, what was it? That's the NaOH. NaOH, yeah. Yeah, it turned purple. No, the acetic acid, it turned purple. It turned pink. Pink. Na is sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide, it stayed clear. And acetic acid, it turned pink. So when we, when we looked at this, we said, okay, this is what we know is happening. And then we had this, these wells, and we tested them, right, in the, little, in the smaller wells we put, we put our samples in. We had this unknown substance. We had the indicator, the phenolphthalein, and we knew that if, we, if this unknown substance was sodium hydroxide, it would be clear. We knew if it was distilled water, it would be clear. But we didn't know what would happen if it was, I mean, well, rather, we knew if it was acetic acid, it would be pink. So we have to set up an if-then statement, a hypothesis, and we say, we say something like, if the unknown is, you know, sodium hydroxide, then the substance will be clear. So there you have an if-then statement. Okay, if it said, so that's one thing, that's one possibility, right? Does that help you? If, if I put that unknown and the pH indicator in this, if I put those two in here together and it stays clear, does that help us? Yeah. It helps us a little bit because it means it's not acetic acid, right? But, it, but there's two possible clear ones, isn't there? So then what, has to, what you have to think about is this unknown. If clear, then we still don't know what it is, right? If after you add the phenolphthalein, of course, pink, then that's easy, right? Then, then it's acetic acid, good, right? So you had, to, you had to have a hypothesis. It didn't matter what the hypothesis was. Uh, it could be anything, right? And, and you could actually list three hypotheses, right? If it's clear, if it's sodium hydroxide, it'll be clear. If it's, if, it's, if it's acetic acid, it'll be pink. And if it's distilled water, it'll be clear. So if clear, then it still could be, this could be, it could be acetic acid sodium hydroxide, right? Or it could be distilled water, right? If it's clear, then what? Then it could be either one of those. Which are those two? The, um, how do you say it? Distilled the, water. Distilled water and the, the NaOH. Very good, NaOH. So it could be either one of those. thought I told you so it could it, at this stage at this stage a right at this stage a it, you're only you're only you could still you could still be either one of those two right well it turns out that if I take acetic acid 
so there's another there's another test we can make calcium hydroxide and then we could also mix acetic acid with sodium hydroxide if you mix acetic acid with sodium hydroxide then you get bubbling all right does that make sense you get carbon dioxide being produced so there's actually one more control group that you can do one more known that you could have developed and that was it acetic acid and plus sodium hydroxide equals bubbles. So then if the unknown is clear, what could we do? What could, what could our step B be if our unknown is, is, is clear? What could we do? We can see if it's the water or the, um, the NaOH. Right, how? We have this unknown, what are we going to mix it with? We know the pH, pH the pH indicator is clear, so we know now that it's clear. So it's not acetic acid. So what could we do to see if it is sodium hydroxide? If I mix, if I mix distilled water can acetic acid, there's no bubbles. If I mix distilled uh, a sodium, hydro uh, sodium hydroxide with acetic acid, I get bubbles. So what could I do to see if it's distilled water or Sodium hydroxide. So I got I got two choices, right? It's either sodium uh, it could be distilled water or it could be sodium hydroxide. I know if if I mix distilled water with so let me write let me write it down, right? Let me write the hypothesis down. So this is a second experiment, right? If what could you try ACE to see if it was the NH? Yeah, excellent. Yes, that's it. Let's write that down, right? So if, if the unknown, and here we're talking about liquids, right? If the unknown is acetic acid, I'm sorry, I messed that up. If the unknown is sodium hydroxide, that's right, thank you, NaOH then I should say, it, and if I mix the unknown with acetic acid, then we have bubbles. which would say that there's a chemical reaction, right? Mm -hmm. So, and if you have bubbles, then you know it's a, if there's no bubbles, what's the only other option? Then it's water. It's distilled water. So really, we can, we can take this concept map, this kind of flow chart, and we can say, look, if there's, if there's, if the unknown is uh, mixed with ACE and you get bubbles, then you know it's, so yes, Oops. Yes, bubbles. It's NaOH, right? And then no, no bubbles. It's what? Distilled water, right? And there it is. That's the flow chart. That's what you have to know. Now, what I told you, there was you didn't even have to do this part based on what I told you initially. What I said in class was... What I said in class was that the unknown turned pink. So that will make it the um when added to the indicator. So you're right. It would make for sure. So 
you're absolutely right that what would happen because it turned pink, we didn't have to go all the way down here, did we? We didn't have to go all the way down to this part of the, of the logic tree. We, only, we stopped up here. It turned pink, so we know it's acetic acid. So we're done. We were done up here. We didn't have to do all this. But if you really wanted to, to really think about it and say, okay, it could be, it could be water, it could be acetic acid, or it could be sodium hydroxide, then initially, if it turned pink, if it didn't turn pink, you wouldn't know if it was distilled water or sodium hydroxide. So you had another test, and you say if the unknown was mixed with ACE, because we know it's not ACE, right? So we know it's not acetic acid. If it's mixed with ACE, then you, and you get bubbles, then in sodium hydroxide, if you get bubbles, if you don't, it's distilled water. Now you're done. Does that make Wait, sense? I got a question. Yeah. So if you change color, is that a, um, is that a um, chemical? Great question. That change in color is a chemical change, right? So the indicator is changing, chemically changing, in order to, and that changes the color. So that's that's it for the liquid the liquid part of that write up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The unknown was an acid, we, but the, the, important, the important point wasn't whether the unknown was an acid or base. The important point is, do you understand how you would determine that, right? So here we have, uh, now we're going to go ahead and talk about the solids, right? That was the liquids. So now with the solids, there's another chain of logic, right? It either was calcium carbonate, which chain, when, when, and there was another one, calcium chloride, right? There were two. There were two possibilities, right? One of those, one of the two, when added to ACE, acetic acid, it bubbled, right? Do you remember that? And the other one, when added to acetic acid, nothing. It got a little cloudy, but it didn't really bubble, all right? So... With this test, it was pretty easy, right? Well, what did we do? We mixed, we, we have this unknown solid. Here's this unknown solid. We know it could only be one of two things. It's either calcium carbonate or it's calcium chloride, right? It's one or the other. So the next step is what test would you run to see if it's one or the other? That's exactly right. Add acetic acid to the unknown and then you have a choice what's if there's bubbles then it's CaCO3 calcium carbonate and if there's no bubbles then it's calcium chloride do you see how drawing it out helps yeah and so, really, then you could do an if-then statement, and you can say, well, if it's calcium carbonate, then it would bubble. And therefore, you know, logically, if it, there are no bubbles, your conclusion beats it's not part of calcium carbonate, right? All right, do you want to go through and try to go through the homework problems, the practice problems, and make sure you know how to do that? Wait, right. so what happened when you add the, um, the A to the Oh, that's a good question. When we added to the uh, ACE to the unknown, there were bubbles. Let me say that. The unknown. There were bubbles. Those were the results. All right. Good question. Do you want to go through some of the practice problems now? Oh, wait. Do we have a conclusion about this? Uh, I'm not really concerned about conclusions yet. I just want you to get, I'm still trying to get kids to understand what's the logic, right, between the if-then statements, because I, I, people still are getting that confused. I'm not sure why yet. Uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting a lot of feedback from students that say, I think it's partly that kids aren't following through. That's my guess. All right, so let's look at some, uh, just one of the practice problems. It says design experiment worksheet. All right, so now let's, let's uh, look at this one. Now, some of these are kind of crazy, but you don't really have to understand all the details, right? It's about the logic. I'm trying to get you guys to think about the logic of what is a hypothesis, what is a theory, what is in the control of the independent group. 
independent variable rather. All right, so hypothesis. Well, let's look at the question first. Let's look at the scenario. The scenario says you're a doctor working at Kaiser. You want to test a new drug for cancer patients. And it says, yes, you have this drug for cancer patients, and they're being treated in the hospital, right? But you, what's your question then? Uh, does, the does the pill work or not, right? So work or no work? So that would just be the hypothesis, right? That's the question. So the question is, does it work or not? So then the hypothesis is what you think the answer is. But let's say you have 100 patients who you're going to test your drug on. So your hypothesis would be, I think it's pretty obvious, if the patients get better as they take the drug, then what? The pill, then the pill works. And that's it, right? That's a simple hypothesis. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Now, things are not always as simple as they seem. It turns out that this is a very complicated issue because there's a lot of things to consider. You have to think about, you have to think about something called ethics, right? Do you think it's ethical to get, do you think it's right if you have a pill that you think works just to give it to the patients to see if it helps them? No, because they could probably get sick. They could get sick, that's right, and it happens a lot, right? We talked about the lat thalidomide, mm -hmm. right, in the 50s. With the flip babies? Mm -hmm. The flipper babies, it was horrible, right? And that was a drug that doctors gave, them, gave people because they thought it was going to help. But then there's, a, there's also this thing that we have to do in order to do, design an experiment. If you're going to design an experiment, you need a control group. And this is where it becomes really ethic, ethics, ethics, ethics becomes a real problem. All right. So how do you have a control group with people? So if they were rabbits, it's easy to think of a control group because you have to have something to compare them to, right? Mm -hmm. So you have 100 people. And so how, what kind of control group do you have to have? You don't, you don't know if the drug works or not. Let's call it drug A. Drug A. What we like to do, and I'm sure you've heard this word placebo before, right? What we like to do is, is to take randomly, at random, right? We take at random 50 people and give them, I don't know if you spell this spell. And, and randomly give them a placebo, right? That's a sugar pill. It looks like, it looks like, taste. you can't tell the difference between that and pill A. And you take, and then not the other 50 people, and you give them the drug, drug A. If the people that get drug A get better and the people that take the placebo don't, right, then what do you know? We're back to our hypothesis, right? If the people that get the take the pill get better, and the people that that, that didn't take the pill get worse. get worse or die, right? Then you know your pill works, right? It's worth it. Also, you're looking to see if these if everybody gets sick. Like everybody starts getting sick off the pill, you don't want to give them the pill either. Like if the people are taking the pill, all of a sudden they start to die. You don't want to give them the pill, right? So. This is why these two groups are, are, are important. This is your control group. So the, sh the placebo is your control group. Do you understand that? So the other drug will be the control group. Okay. And then the drug A is your experimental group. You said drug A is your experimental Yeah, because that's the one you don't know, right? That's the one you're testing. Wait, drug Say what now? Wait, what's, what's, what's number three, two, one? I'm doing number one. You said drug A is your experimental group. We made up. We made up the characteristic A. We just said the drug. The drug. When you're the 50 people that are that are that we're giving the drug to, we're going to call that the experimental group. The control group is the 50 people we're giving the placebo to. 
No, the placebo just means it's a it's a it's not a drug. It's a sugar pill, or it's a you know it's chalk. It's something you can't take. You can't tell that it's not the drug. It looks like the drug, smells like the drug, tastes like the drug, but but it's not the drug. It's up on the board. Fifty people take the drug, and the other fifty don't. Do you see the ethical problem with that? If you're one of those people, you don't know. Usually the doctor doesn't know. We call it a double-blind study. The patient doesn't know. The doctors don't know who has who until the end. Who has and gets the drug. Can you imagine if you needed that pill to live and the drug happens to work and then the people that, that took the drug live and you die because you're part of the placebo group? That would suck, right? Yeah. That's very good, but it's, that wouldn't be... That wouldn't, I'll talk about independent dependent group in a minute. Get this right. The experiment would be the drug that's given to the patient, and the control group would be the other drug that's given, right? You're right, the placebo. The one that, the, the drug that doesn't, that doesn't do anything, that really is not, the drug that's not being tested, right? So the, the one that's being tested we call the experimental group. The one that we, we're not really, that we know doesn't do anything, we call it the placebo group or the control group. So now, the next question, so that's the control group, that's your experimental group in this experiment. Now you have an independent and dependent variable. The independent variable is the one that, it doesn't depend, it doesn't depend on the other variable, right? So let's talk a little bit about independent and dependent variable. I, and I said this in class, so usually we put the dependent, the, I'm sorry, independent on the X, right? And the dependent, we put on the Y, okay? So the independent, we put on the X. The dependent, we put on the Y. And usually, let's look at an example. If I drop a ball from 30 feet, 30 feet, and, it take, and I measure how much time it takes for it to fall, uh, let's say... That's not a good, that's not a, no, let's, let's, let's do another experiment a little easier because that's a little bit involved. Let's say, let's say that I'm measuring time, all right, how fast, I want to know how fast. I have the distance, it's a mile, and I want to know if I put 20 pounds on you, if I put 10 pounds, if the amount of weight I put on you is going to impact how far, how, how quickly you can go from A to B, right? So if I put 50 pounds on you, how fast do you, does it take to get to So I'm measuring time, but what I'm changing weight. The distance is the same, right? Which one of these depends on the other? Does the amount of weight I put on your back depend on the time? So, okay, no, it doesn't. You're right. So time, what depends on how fast you get, how fast you get there? The amount of weight. So time, time changes depending on the weight, right? The weight. So time depends on the weight. So time goes on the Y. Weight goes on the, on the X. Do you see that? So now in this experiment, when we talk about uh, independent, dependent variable, we're measuring whether people get better or not, right? What is going to determine if people get better or not? The pill they take. The pill they take. So the independent variable, the one that does not depend on the other, is the pill they take. And what's the dependent variable in this? Excellent. Oh my God, well said. Elegantly said. Very good. So the dependent... is the effects of the pill. Agreed? Mm -hmm. And so you should be able to do the rest on your own, right? All right thank you. And that's everything. Now upload it and okay. people send it. Oh, okay, thank you. Mr. Yeah. Put it to charge away from the water over there somewhere. Bye, Mr. Is it time to go? All right. Have a good one. <laughs>